that's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, I actually got cold this evening. It was really weird for me to have sleeves on. It's very strange. But I did get chilly. It was funny because Chris said, well, to go, I'm getting cold. I need a blanket. So anyway, I'm just a little bit late. I had to text Amy and say, get up here and get out of the bathroom again. So uh, last night when we came live, when I came on here live, I was on Color Valley Cooks and I didn't even think about it, but I told Chris when I got into the living room, I said, I had a lot of people watching Bible study tonight. It was really strange. And he goes, well, maybe you were on the wrong uh, platform. And I said, you know what? I bet I was and then I was. <laughs> That was something. But anyway, I hope y'all had a great day. Me and Chris had a good day. We've worked really hard today. We've been, got up, went to the post office early. We went by the grocery store, got the stuff for our chicken and dressing. We spent all day making a chicken and dressing video. And it should post to Facebook, hopefully. I've tried to make it post four times. And uh, they got a new system, the way that it works. So it may be live as I speak for all I know. Um, but I did post it to YouTube. But I wanted to get chicken and dressing on uh, because I know the holidays are coming up. And the chicken and dressing recipes that I have and tutorials just aren't very good. So I put together a really good one today and I hope y'all enjoy it. Um, with that said, let's talk about Genesis. Um, this is an exciting part of the Bible to me. Um, we had talked last night about uh, Noah and his descendants. Um, you know, coming off the ark and replenishing the earth. And um, we talked about Abram, which is Abraham. But um, we talked about how he would be the story for tonight. Now, the cool thing, and I was reading in my footnotes about it, is there's a cup, there's several cup, several things that's pretty cool about it. Okay. And, um, I'm going to start, and um, we'll talk a little bit about the tower, okay? Now, the Tower of Babel, um, and I think in my ESV when I was listening to it, they call it Babel. But um, what happened was when all these people started multiplying and replenishing the earth, there were... Um, there were so many of them, and they could all communicate together. And remember, it's not that far from Adam, not really. So, these people were still really, really intelligent. Intelligent enough that they decided to build a tower, and they were doing such a great job at it, and they were not spread around the earth like God told them to do. They were standing in one spot in one area and they were building this tower up into the heavens and he did it partly because he's, he just said there's such a large people and they're not, you know, they're not, you know, doing what I asked them to do and they're not moving and who knows what they can accomplish when they could all speak the same language and, um, and, and I really do think these people were more intelligent than people are today because when God made Adam, I'm sure he, you know, the Adam before he multiplied with other people, his brain was pretty maxed out and he was awfully intelligent. Um, so these people were still very intelligent in that time. Um, like I think some people think because it was so long ago, they weren't very intelligent, but that's, that's totally incorrect. Think about it. Uh, who these people really were. So God decides that that he's not going to let that happen. And he destroys the tower. And it makes everybody upset. And they decide not to build the tower. And they start going to different parts of the world. Okay. So that's what the tower is about in a nutshell. Pretty much. Now, we talked to you last night a little bit about Shem, and it says that uh, the genealogy of Shem is repeated after the story of ba uh, Babel to emphasize God's pr preservation of a godly line in the midst of wickedness, okay? It says the genealogy is presented in multiples of seven. I thought this was interesting, okay? 
So the genealogies presented in multiples of seven with the seven places occupied by men of particular importance from Adam to Enoch were seven generations, okay? And from Enoch to Eber, ancestor of the Hebrews, there are seven. Now, Enoch is the, the, the first one I mentioned from Adam to Enoch. Enoch never even died. God just took it. Okay, so he was very important. And then it says here that seven more generations passed from Enoch to Eber. And Eber was an ancestor of the Hebrew. And then it says from Eber to Abram are another seven generations. So, you know, numbers matter in the Bible Things do repeat themselves, and I know you've probably heard your daddy say it or somebody say, you know, things go in sevens. I remember my daddy used to say that even the recessions and the good times for us follow that seven-year reign if you just kind of watch it. And um, he really believed that way. My daddy's not even a saved man. He's not. He knows a lot about the Bible. His daddy was a deacon. My mom's dad was a pastor. But my daddy has never professed salvation. He's also never, even if he's a, if, even if he does nice things for people and he helps people, he still has never said, I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior, you know. I've never seen him pray. I've never seen him open the word of God. And there was a lot of things that daddy did that a lost person would do, okay? Does that mean he's terrible? No, he did some nice things too, but nice don't get you into heaven. Nothing gets you into heaven. Nothing we can do. Nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, takes us to heaven, okay? We can never be good enough, or we wouldn't need a Jesus as a Savior. So, um... Anyway, y'all can keep my daddy in your prayers because I'd love to see him saved. Um, so after we talk about that, um, we're ta it talks about Abram and Sari. Sa Sari. I won't say Sari because I'm Southern, but it's Sari, I guess. <laughs> um, and they go into an area that uh, apparently there was a... Um, famine. And so Abram and Sari, Sari go into <laughs> Egypt. And the Pharaoh looks at Sari and she's a gorgeous woman, very light, fair skin. And Abram knew this was going to happen. So he looks at Sari and he says, Sari, please tell these guys that you are my sister because I don't want them to kill me because they think you're uh, my wife and then they'll kill me and then take you, you know. And so she did what her husband asked her to do. And the Pharaoh, of course, thought she was beautiful. And he took her in. Um, it doesn't say he laid with her. But it does say, apparently, he was uh, being good to Abram and Lot. And uh, helping them with their cattle and feeding their animals. And, and, um, and then God cursed Pharaoh. And bad things started happening. And Pharaoh gave Sari back to Abram. And he said, why in the world did you tell me this was your sister? You know, look what God has done to me. Um, you know, have her back. Take her, you know. Um, and in reality, even if it was kind of a lie, because it really was, but in reality, Sari was a half-sister to Abram. Remember, we're still in the, you know, back when people did that, really, you know, because they had to. Wasn't it that many people? So, um, it says that Abram married his half-sister, Sari, the daughter of his father, but not his mother. Nahor married Milcah, the daughter of his brother, Haran, Therefore, his niece. So, Sari was his niece. And you can see a family tree of Abraham in my Bible. Okay? Now, um, it says such relationship would later be forbidden as incest incestuous. Incestuous. Um, you can see Levi 18. But God planned for the human race to descend from one couple necessitating marriage between brothers and sisters for a time. Certainly, however, there was never a sanction for any such relationship outside of marriage. Um, so, that you know, that, that just kind of describes that down there in that 
I love the footnotes in my Bible. That's what's so great about having a study Bible. And it doesn't have to be this women's study Bible. You can just buy a study Bible, and it's going to kind of tell you the same thing, you know, give you a more in-depth thing of, of what you're reading about. So um, now we are um, in, the, in the section where God promises, makes a lot of promises to Abram, okay? And he says, get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I'll make your name great. And you shall be a blessing and I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And all in, in you, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's saying a lot, isn't it? So, um, what, wow, what a promise. Could you imagine Abram getting that promise from God, how encouraging that would be? Um, so, it says that Abram's story, like Noah's, begins with a command from, and promise from Yahweh, the covenant God, okay? It says that the command is to separate himself from his countrymen, undoubtedly idolatry. Idolat uh, idol I can't even speak, idolaters, however you say it. Uh, the promise includes seven clauses, D idolatry, but it's hard for me to say idolaters. It's just hard to say to me. Um, he says to Abraham, he gives him seven, there's the number seven again, gives him seven promises. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in all the families on the earth shall be blessed. Uh, so that's a lot, isn't it? Um, so we see the number seven again. And we, take, and we see that Abram took Sarah's wife. And he took his brother's son, Lot. And they go um, oh, and depart. Okay? So... Let's see what's next. The, la the last thing that we read was Abraham inherits Canaan. Okay, that was chapter 13. I think I told y'all to read through 13 to tell you the truth. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure I did. And um, Abraham went up from Egypt. He took his wife and all that he had and lot with him. Now, this kind of aggravated me, but it's just, you know, I remember the first time I read it, I thought, Lord of mercy, why did Abraham do that? But now I know why Abraham did it. Um, he, he took his son-in-law with him, and he, they had a lot of cattle and a lot of stuff, and they had so much that Lot's herdsmen were arguing with Abraham's herdsmen because there was not enough land to feed their animal, their animals. So Abraham says, look, God has said he's going to give us this land, everything that you can see. So you look out across the lamb lot, land lot and you decide where you want to take your family and your herdsmen and your cattle. And Abraham gave Lot first choice. Now, isn't that something that Abraham, this man, older man, uh, with Sarah, his wife, decides that he is going to give Lot what looks the best. So Lot looks out and he chooses what he thought looked the best. Problem is, and I remember when I read it for the first time, even when I was a young girl, I thought, well, he's just going to let Lot have the good land. So Lot does go that direction. And guess what? It's near Sodom. It's near sinfulness and mean people and, and terrible even if it was a beautiful area and it was luscious, Lot wound up in an area full of sin, okay? So, that's terrible. And now, uh, I can see why Abram did that. Abram didn't know that, but God knew it, you know? And so, God, I'm sure, laid it on Abraham's heart to let Lot, Lot choose. And he knew that Lot would be the one that would go in that direction instead of Abraham, and um, so that happens with Abraham. So we are going to talk about the next time we get together, what just happens to Lot in this area. What um, happens and, and, 
you know, what can Abraham do to help it? All right. So that's what we're going to talk about next. Tonight is Wednesday night. Tomorrow is Thursday. Um, as far as I know, I should be free tomorrow night to do Bible study at 930. So let's do 13. Let's see. We're going to start with chapter 14, Lot's Captivity and Rescue. Uh, 15 is God's Covenant with Abram. And 16 is Hagar and Ishmael. Let's go through 16, Hagar and Ishmael. And we'll go through that tomorrow night, and it should be good, okay? If you hadn't had a chance to watch the uh, chicken and dressing, take a look at it, y'all. Oh, my gosh, it was so good tonight. And I made some stuffed eggs, deviled eggs. And I made uh, some giblet gravy, and I made some green and green beans, and we were so bad. And I was thinking today, Lord have mercy, Tammy. I have got to go on a diet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, because, I mean, I weigh, I don't, I don't care, y'all know. I weigh right about 200, and, like in the morning, I weigh about 204 pounds. And I'm 5'5", five, five, and it's a little too much. And I told Chris today, I said, I need to start going to the gym with you and at least trying to walk on the treadmill. I've got uh, my, my Achilles tendon on the right-hand side has been replaced with my big toe tendon. And uh, now my left Achilles tendon is getting really tight and really bothering me. And it's so aggravating. So I told Chris today, I said, I'm going to start exercising with you. And hopefully this tendon will get better. And if it gets worse, then I won't be able to exercise, which is normally what has happened since I've been through chemo. No matter what I try to do, no matter what kind of exercise it is, I wind up with bursitis and hurt areas in my body, and it's just like my, my muscles are terrible from the chemotherapy, and it's just hard. But I'm going to try, y'all. I think I'm really going to try, so um, he needs to start taking me with him. Um, let's go ahead and say our prayers, and um, I'm trying to think if there's anything major going on. May's turning in our first paper tonight. I think it's due at midnight, and Chris... Helped her proof it tonight. So hopefully she'll do okay on that. Um, May said that she does get to come home. She gets a fall break. And it is the week of her birthday. Her birthday is October the 10th. So she's excited about that. Amy will have spring break. I mean, not spring break. Fall break the week before that. So um, it'll be a good time with us and our kids over the next few weeks, which is nice. Um, so let's say our prayers. I hope y'all had a blessed day, and um, I love all of y'all, and I appreciate y'all listening, and I hope y'all were just as excited as I am to read God's Word, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for your Son who died on that old rugged cross so that we could be closer with you through Him. Praise the Lord for that. We... Um, Hope that each and every one of the people that are watching tonight um, are blessed, that you will bless them for wanting to learn more about you, that you will um, give them a good night's rest and help them have a great day tomorrow so that we can all come back together tomorrow night and talk about the next three chapters. Um, we thank you for all of these examples that you've given us in the Bible that we can read um, we really don't know how blessed we are that you have provided all of this for us. And not only that, salvation, and not only that, our, your Holy Spirit that comes to guide us each and every day. We should be shouting to the rooftops and shouting to our neighbors and shouting to everybody around us about how good you are and how you have made this life here on this earth more abundant and how you have conquered death and that we will just not even die, but come to be living with you in heaven. I mean, how how much better could that ever be? We thank you for all that you do for us. And help us, Lord, um, to love you more and learn and want to learn. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a blessed night. And thank you so much for tuning in to Real Southern Woman. And I do love you. And I do read your comment, comments. And I do pray for y'all. And I hope y'all pray for us as well. Y'all have a blessed night. And um, we will see you tomorrow. And remember, it's going to be chapters 14 through 16. 14, 15, and 16. Three chapters. 
See y'all tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.